Hello everybody and welcome to another watercolor painting tutorial. Today we're going to be painting this beautiful moody Norwegian landscape and this painting was inspired by um, a photo that I took while in Norway so I will if I can figure out how to upload it to this video then I will uh, show you it. But um, basically what we're going to be doing is just covering the top half of our painting with a layer of water. You can see that I very lightly sketched out uh, kind of a reference for what I'm going to be painting. Um, so you can kind of copy it if you'd like or you can just freehand it. It's not a very difficult um, silhouette. So once that is all covered, I'm going to be taking black watercolor primarily here and I'm going to ooh la la all right <laughs> um so I haven't painted with um or on cotton paper in a very long time so I'm not used to this explosion of color that you're seeing happening right now so we're gonna have to adjust that in a second that would not have happened on the other paper that i use holy moly that is really cool um i'm just gonna try and fix that so i'm just um, basically rinsing my brush and then rubbing it against or drying it against a paper towel so that's what I'm <clears throat> trying to do here because this is very explosive <laughs> that is really cool I do want a little bit more color up top here so just adding some more here see it's still kind of exploding upwards like that that is not what we want so I'm just again dragging whoops that's also not what we want. Oh my gosh. And I can't I can't even do this because it's cotton paper. What a disaster. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So now we're just going to do the same thing for our top mountains because we're kind of creating a um, layered mountain look here so you know what I am going to improvise and just create a misty mountainous background first or misty sky sky background. There we go. And then take my black watercolor again. See, I've had cotton paper for a very long time and I've painted on cotton paper before, but it's such um it's really a luxurious paper because you don't really have to do very much to mix. It just blends so well and it holds water really well as well. So you don't have to um, like keep applying water over and over and over again. It just um, it stays wet and damp and, and mixes really well. I don't like 
like this gap here. So yeah, we're just lifting off the paint. Um, I know this is a little bit all over the place, but we're learning together, I suppose. And I don't like how far that one goes out. This paper is very forgiving, so you can see how many times I've lifted um, paint off and it still looks really nice. So I'm trying to achieve a mountain effect where there's a mountain coming down here and then there's another very steep one joining up with it. It's just hard to achieve that look because um, I don't want these two touching. And I don't know how to subtly fade them into one another because I'm not used to working with cotton paper. So I'm just adding more black over on this side because I want this one side of the mountain to look very dramatic. So it kind of swoops down like this. I also want this to look a little bit dramatic too. So I'm gonna add some more. I love painting mountains, but in Norway, there's a lot of fjords, fjords. I'm not sure how to pronounce that word, but um, they're these openings, I suppose, that water flows into and or where there is water rather and so they're not they're mountains but they're they're the edges are and the drop-offs are so sharp so and I'm not used to painting that kind of uh, mountainscape so it's very interesting learning process as well and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply water again here, create a, a wash. And then I'm going to do something similar to what I did up here with the mountains, but I'm going to create a nice reflection. And we're only going to go up to here because this is going to be a different section. So we're just painting the middle section right now, covering it with my mop brush. And I'm leaving a very thin white gap at the horizon line or kind of the point where uh, the water meets the mountain range. My goodness, this paper is something else, I tell you. If you can get your hands on cotton paper, it takes a little bit of time to get used to because I find that you have a lot less control, but if you're, for these kinds of moody landscapes, it's excellent. It's so, so easy to paint because you don't need a lot of control for these. Okay, so we're going to be following the same pattern as up here. I'm actually just really quickly going to add some of these blue highlights to the top because it's kind of weird that we've got blue up here and just black mountains up there and you can barely really see the blue but it's to me it's visible visible enough that I do want to um, add it we are just going to 
follow the same layout as the top. So we want to put a lot more down here and a lot more here on this area as well. And you can sort of make sure you rinse your brush between strokes and you can just uh, help help it along sideways but you do want to leave the center fairly light so that it follows the same pattern as the as the top So I'm just lifting some of the pigment from the middle here and then I'm going to add some more here. And actually I'm not too too happy with the thickness of it. So I'm going to just try and make it a little bit thinner. Okay, so we are back. It is all dry. Before I move on, I'm just going to quickly fix this. With white acrylic paint, I'm just painting over it. Otherwise, it's really going to bother me. That is my tip of the day. White acrylic paint is very, very helpful in watercolor painting. You can achieve so many cool accents with it. Um, and perhaps you can do the same with watercolor white but it would probably have to come to from a tube and be really thick and opaque to achieve similar results so there we go that looks a little bit better now we've properly separated the horizon there. And now we are just going to focus on this bottom portion here. So we're gonna paint um, some rocks, um, trees and, and whatnot, and um, kind of really complete the paint. You're gonna take some black watercolor and just start painting on rocks. So we're gonna focus on the edge where the um, water meets the, the uh, edge of the land there. And your rocks can be super jaggedy. Um, they don't have to be totally smooth or anything like that. And we are going to be adding some white accents with white acrylic paint on the rocks to make it look like there's a little bit of snow on them or ice. Uh, so it's going to kind of make the whole painting come together. But the trick here is um, you see that there's quite a, I guess, 
prominent line separating the water from the land and we want it not that we want to cover it up but we don't want to make it look like there is this intentional line because the coast never looks like completely straight or at least not in my experience um, so we do want to very subtly mask that with these rocks And so you don't want to, you know, paint rocks over every single portion of this line, but for, for most of it, so it looks like, you know, intentional um, and natural. You can add a couple more rocks just at the bottom here, and you can make them quite a bit bigger than these ones, uh, just because they're closer to the viewer. So you want them to um, appear closer to the viewer by making them a lot bigger and uh, making them darker also really helps because things that are closer are darker like more they're more defined um, and one of the ways that we can achieve that is by making them darker I kind of want to add some super subtle shadows coming from these so I'm just gonna I rinsed my brush out and I'm just adding some um, some shadows coming from these rocks. You can even attach some of them. You know what? I might just fill in a large portion of this because I kind of like how it looks, how how the rocks bleed into the shadow and it makes it look um, much more moody, which is definitely the look that I'm going for. I think I'm going to paint on a little in a nook shook over here somewhere. So in a nook shook, um, it's very easy to make one. You just stack a bunch of rocks on top of one another. I mean in real life, but when you're painting it, try to make the rocks very irregularly shaped. You don't want them too uh, circular or too rectangular um, because obviously rocks don't look like that in real life. And you do want to make it look fairly similar to what a, lo a, a real rock would look like. If this was still wet, it would be really easy to add trees to it. Um, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to add some trees, but they're going to be very short because um, I do want these mountains to look like they're towering above everything else. So um, going to make this super moody here. I'm going to paint over it. See the issue if I leave this the way it is it's going to create a harsh line there so now I'm kind of forced to make the entire top portion wet again, which is what I wanted to avoid. Um, but I think we're just gonna have to do that. Just cover the entire top with water. See, with cotton paper, this is very easy to do and it doesn't really ruin your first layer. I've noticed um, if I did this 
with uh with another like with non-cotton paper it wouldn't look as um natural it, or not natural but there would be a little bit of damage uh on the first layer and by damage I just mean that there would be streaking going on like you could see that I painted over it again um so this is a really nice change this it really helps having um detail brushes for for things like this if you followed me for a long time, you know that I really, really, really like painting my pine trees. I love how mystical they look despite a changing landscape. Like no matter where you paint them, they just look so towering and um, unique. And it really helps having a detail brush to achieve that look. Here I'm using, this is my favorite, it's the Quadruple Zero. I've used this brush for a couple years now and it really, really does the job well. Uh, you have really good control with it because it's, it's very thin but it's also very short. Um, so as always, I've, I've linked it in the description of this video if you want to check it out. Okay, so I'm just going to add some branches uh, just to one side of the painting because I think it's going to add a little bit more of a pop. Like these these uh, pine trees that I painted, you can barely see them. And that's the look that I wanted. I wanted them to be super misty. But if we paint on a very um, prominent tree branch, I think that will really add to the entire painting. So um, I'm just going to start over here. I'm going to bring it out like so. By the way, longer brushes, like longer thin brushes, are really good for long tree branches. The quadruple uh, zero brush that I mentioned earlier is really great for very, very fine details where you need a very steady hand. Um, whereas uh, the quadruple zero, it's a little bit long, sorry, the double zero is a little bit longer. Uh, so it allows for you to drag out these really long branches and the watercolor, uh, because there's more more length, it stays on the brush a little bit longer so you don't have to reload as frequently. Um, so I found that this brush works really well for long branch detail work. I'm just going to add one more big branch over here just on in the corner, stretching all the way across. Now we're just gonna add some nice white accents. So I'm going to grab my white acrylic paint, some beautiful details on all of the branches that we painted. Just beautiful snowy accents. Like so. All right, so now we're gonna, I've completed adding snow to my branches, so I'm now just gonna add some snow to my rocks. So obviously our little the nook shook needs a little bit of snow. Now the snow on my rocks, I'm applying it very roughly uh, because I want it to look like a combination of snow and ice. And Sort of like that. And not every single rock has to have this. I'm just adding a little bit of water while the acrylic is still wet. 
and it kind of makes the snow a little bit more subtle and, and gentle. actually going to use a bigger brush for this. There we go. I like that a lot better than the very um, harsh lines of the snow that I painted. Okay, so now that we have that all complete, I'm going to add a little bit of um, snow actually falling from the sky. So, oh dear. I'm going to take just any old uh, brush and I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. So I've got my white acrylic here. You can see on the right side and I just dipped this paintbrush in water and I'm really watering down this acrylic paint so that when I tap it against my brush, it comes off fairly easily onto my painting. Reload. And if you want bigger splashes, then you probably want to use more water and less paint. And you just keep doing this until you're happy with the amount of snow. And that's basically it. That's our painting right there. Awesome. So if you enjoyed today's painting, um, Please don't forget to subscribe, uh, hit the like on this video, uh, it really helps my channel out, and I will see you guys in next week's video.